Morning, night, public holidays, Judy says the torment never ends. If it's not the semi-trailers running her off the road, it's the noise from the factory they're servicing. She's got the videos to prove it. It was frightening. I had my children in the car. Hell. Got that on dash cam. You never knew what was laying on the other side of the road. A B-double, a semi, and usually we would hit them at the peak and get run off the road. It was terrifying. What a dick. Imagine having to put up with this day and night. Jesus. And for Judy McDonald, coming and going isn't just a fight for survival. Even living on her property has become a battle. Oh, it's about 9.30 and there's a generator going with a pump or something or other and it vibrates through the house. It's a public holiday. How would you describe what you're living next door to? An industrial estate. I've been living here for 17 years on 20 acres of rural property. My family and I have been enjoying living here until two years ago. And now I live next door to an industrial estate that operates 365 days of the year. Trucks have been coming all day today, Sunday. Judy says she complained to the council, but nothing happened. So she started a video diary. Oh, it's the 16th of June, it's just past midnight. This truck has broken us up. When they're working at night, you can hear the rumbling of the trucks, which actually vibrate through the house with the refrigeration units and truck noise. My kids still can't get to sleep. Same truck, refrigerations are still running. It's unbelievable. You just can't sleep, and therefore we have to pack up and just move out. Yeah, it must drive you crazy. Absolutely, you have no idea. It is so frustrating. In three weeks there, we had 1,274 truck movements and 2,000 cars. Graham is Judy's dad. He takes his daughter and grandchildren in when the noise gets too much. Judy comes over to our place uh, three, four nights a week. Uh, then she's got to come back and feed the horse and then go to work. I mean, the kids have got to go to school. The land and business next door is owned by Victorian man Pasquale Cafari, a convicted drug trafficker who's been linked to organised crime. Locals say his son Joe appears to run the packing plant, which is just 80 metres from Judy's home. Judy says she doesn't care who owns the property. Her beef is with the council for allegedly letting the packing shed operate without it being correctly zoned. There's a power outage and this alarm goes off. It's driving us nuts. I don't think any other neighbour has to put up with an alarm bell going off just because it's a power outage, but because we live next door to an industrial estate now. Apparently you do. I don't understand why the council have not done anything in two years. It just makes you really wonder what is going on in the councils. Sunday morning, Christ's sake. It's been banging and clanging since about 20 to 6. I've spoken, I'd say, to a minimum of 23 council officers and got nothing done, nothing at all. Court documents show the council did take action against the McDonald's neighbours in 2017. This enforcement notice saying, the council believes you are committing development offences. But Graham says nothing happened. They went to court with them and the, the council dropped all charges. Uh, I don't know why. They had a meet, without prejudice meeting and that was, that was it. And he's been allowed to continue uh, like this for the whole two years. The shed's all working tonight. The lights are on. It's lit up like a Christmas tree and it just lights up my whole paddock. Graham even hired lawyers to see if they could get any sense out of the council without success. Then a week ago, a small victory with the council telling the neighbours they can't access the packing plant on Judy's size of the property, which makes the narrow country road safer again. So obviously it's early afternoon and all the workers are rolling in next door? Yep. 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 They do every day. So now the trucks and the workers roll in from the other side of the property, but Judy says their lifestyle is still ruined. It's just impacted on our lifestyle, yeah. like in every which way it possibly can. Mm. Their health, our mental health, our lifestyle of living on a rural property, that's why we wanted to live here. But now we live next door to an industrial packing distribution trucking depot. Finally, the council has issued an enforcement notice against the owner next door, 
telling them that the massive packing shed constitutes medium industry. And if they want to continue operating, then they're going to have to apply for a permit. Judy says they've also been told that they'll now only be allowed to operate between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday to Saturday. But it seems that hasn't stopped them. There's been two trucks that I've seen this morning since I've been home. And they're all working, you can hear forklifts and pallet jacks and yeah, so again, on a Sunday. Judy recorded these videos just last Sunday. This is Sunday, 30th of June. It's just after five and they have been working on a Sunday all day. Truck after truck after truck. How would you describe what the last two years have been like for you, Judy? It's like hell. We have only lived on my property part-time because the council will not do their job and we want to know why. So do we. Moreton Bay Regional Council says it's taken action against the strawberry farm but couldn't explain why that's taken so long. It is now reviewing Judy's footage, which is fine, but so far the council's action has been well below par. So we'll be watching them now. Their full statement is on our homepage.